Our next presentation is titled Rescuing Cognitive Dysfunction, Implications for Schizophrenia, and it's presented by Eric Edmonds. Schizophrenia is a debilitating disorder that affects millions of people worldwide. It's about twice as common as Alzheimer's disease. <clears throat> and you may be familiar with symptoms like hallucinations and delusions, but you probably don't know as much about cognitive symptoms, which affect the patient's ability to think. And although you might not guess it, cognitive dysfunction in schizophrenia is by far the leading cause of loss of quality of life for patients. So on the bottom left here is a painting by British artist Brian Charnley, who suffered from schizophrenia. What I want you to take from this image is that there's a clear image of the, um, of the artist in the center, but it has this disorienting background. And I think this nicely illustrates the combination of awareness and confusion that many patients experience. So my thesis looks at how cognitive dysfunction arises in the brain. Up here is an image of the rat brain from the side, and although the rat may not be the most popular animal, it's a really important research model. And I study two brain regions that form a connection that is critical for cognition. In neuroscience, we refer to these connections as circuits, and you can think of them as pretty similar to electrical circuits. The first brain region that I study is the prefrontal cortex, or PFC, circled up here in blue, and that connects and forms this really important circuit with the striatum, circled in green. Now, one of the key components of schizophrenia is an underactive prefrontal cortex. So, to model schizophrenia in my rats, I induce prefrontal dysfunction. By shutting down the prefrontal cortex, I can impair cognition. In the bottom middle is a graph showing accuracy on a cognitive task where rats need to pay attention and act when they think a certain amount of time has passed. When I inactivate the prefrontal cortex, I can reduce accuracy and kind of model this cognitive dysfunction. But I don't want to just study cognitive dysfunction. I want to figure out new ways to treat it. And to do this, I use an incredibly exciting new approach in neuroscience, optogenetics. What this technique allows me to do is use genetic tools to make brain cells, neurons, respond to laser light. And this is really important because it allows me to be very, very specific about when, how, and where I stimulate the brain. The most exciting part of my thesis work is shown in this graph in the bottom right. Here, again, I have inactivated the prefrontal cortex and kind of modeled this cognitive dysfunction. But I'm also stimulating with optogenetics this prefrontal cortex to striatum circuit. And amazingly, I can make animals better at this task and rescue this impaired cognition. So, although it's maybe a long way off, I think that my thesis suggests that the connection, the circuit between the prefrontal cortex and striatum is a promising target for treatment. Our research group is currently working on new and novel ways to stimulate the brain, and we hope that this is going to reduce cognitive dysfunction and lead to longer, more fulfilling lives for patients. Thank you so much.